To create a road with Road Architect, first select Create Road System under the Road Architect file menu. This will create a Road Architect System game object. Once you create this Road Architect System, it will create a road. Select the Road Game Object from the Hierarchy menu, then hold down Control and left mouse click. This will build the road nodes where you click on the train. If you wish to insert nodes in between other nodes, hold down Shift and left click. To delete a node, click the Nodes Gizmo and hit the Delete key. This will automatically update the road as you've deleted the node. To move a node, simply click the Nodes Gizmo and move it around like you would with any other Unity transform. The road should automatically update as you move the node. To create another road, reselect the Road Architect System game object in the Hierarchy menu. Find the button Add Road in the Inspector window. Click Add Road and this will add another road under the Hierarchy. In this case, we have created road number 2. Next, we will go over the options on the road. Make sure that you select the entire road game object. In the inspector window, you will notice about 30 options to choose from. The first option is gizmos. This will show or hide the gizmos to give you a better view of what it would look like in actual gameplay. The next option is lanes. You can choose from two, four, or six lanes. If you have use default materials selected, which we will go over in a second, it will automatically update the road's materials for you. The next option is lane width. To change the lane width, change the value in the text box to your desired value. This is in meters. For instance, if we want to change the lane width from 5 meters to 7 meters, we'll put a 7 here and then click Update Road. Now the lanes are 2 meters wider at a total of 7 meters wide. This will make the road width 14 meters wide plus the width of your shoulders. The next option allows you to enable or disable the shoulders. Unselecting this option will disable the road shoulders. The reason they are separate meshes is to allow for different physical material and different materials in general to be applied to the shoulder compared to the road to provide a more realistic experience when driving. The next option is shoulder width. This is also in meters. To change this option, change the text value to your desired meter width. If we want to change it from 3 meters to 5 meters, we change it to 5 and then click Update Road, and now the shoulders are 5 meters wide. The next option is Road Definition. This is the distance in meters in each road slot. The distance from this and this is 5 meters right now. So if we change this to 10, the distance between these two slots slots should double. The default is 5 meters, but if you're using unusually sharp turns or unusually steep roads, then you might, might find more success in lowering this value. The next option is use default materials. If this is checked, the entire road will use the default materials that come with Road Architect. This allows the materials to change automatically for you when you change other options such as lane width and more advanced options with bridges and intersections. The next two options pertain to grade enforcement. This is how steep the roads can be. In real life most roads are 8% grade or lower. About 0.001% are greater than 8% road grade. 
The default in Road, road Architect is a maximum road grade of 8%. The first checkbox, which is Max Grade Enforced, this will enforce the road grade. If you uncheck this box, it will no longer in enforce a limitation on road grade. If you have enforced a maximum road grade, a slider will appear where you can change the road grade. This format is a value from 0 to 1. The default is 8%. The next option is multi-threading enabled. This will enable or disable multi-threading across the entire Road Architect system. This is a global option. You will want to use this option if you are building very large road systems across multiple terrains that span hundreds of kilometers. The next option is Save Mesh Assets. This will save every single generated road mesh as a Unity asset. The only reason you should want to use this option is if you are using the same road in multiple scenes. The odds of someone needing to do this I think would be very low, but this option is available. You get a big warning telling you how much this will slow down the generation. It will add several minutes depending on the size of your road uh, per generation if you have this checkbox checked. The next option is terrain subtraction. By default, this is 0 0.01 or 10 centimeters. This is how much the terrain gets subtracted from the road. If you are experiencing terrain poke through due to very steep grade roads, then you may find raising this value will solve your issue. Most of the time, you will never need to edit this value. The next option is spline magnitude limit. This affects the tension of the spline. Raising this value is helpful if you have a large amount of distance between nodes. The default value is good for most purposes. Height modification refers to the train's deformation to the road spline. Detail removal refers to the removal of details such as grass and other landscape. Tree removal pertains to removing trees. Heights match width pertains to the distance surrounding the road in which the train will deform to the road. By default, this value is 50 meters, meaning 25 meters to the left of the spline center and 25 meters to the right of the spline center will deform to the road splines. The next option is details clear width. Similar to above, but with a default value of 30 meters, meaning 15 meters to the left and 15 meters to the right, the details will be cleared out. Details clear height refers to the height in which the details will be removed. This is useful for bridges. For instance, underneath the bridge, you do not want to remove the details. Trees clear width is similar to the width options above with a default value of 30 meters, meaning trees to the left within 15 meters and trees to the right within 15 meters will be removed. Trees clear height refers to the height similar to the detail clear height where only trees within a height of 50 meters will be removed. This will leave trees intact that the height does not reach 50 meters within this road spline, for instance beneath a bridge that is higher than 50 meters. This will preserve trees underneath bridges, essentially. The next option is store terrain history separate from scene. If this is checked, it will store the terrain history data in a separate folder within Unity. If this is unchecked, it will save it with the scene itself. The next options are road and shoulder splitting. By default, the entire road is split up into sections. So the entire road's meshes are split up into sections. For instance, between node 0 and node 1 is one section. Between node 1 and node 2 is another section. There are two reasons why the road is split up. The first reason is it increases the collision detection speed via bounding box calculations. 
The second reason is this allows for unique road marking per section. For instance, you may want the section between node 0 and node 1 to be a passing lane, which would be a yellow dotted line. But between node 1 and node 2, due to it being a hill, you would want to turn this into a double yellow line, meaning no passing. If you have a more unique road system that might benefit from customization of the splitting, you can turn on manual splitting. The next options are editor camera travel. This is an editor only option which allows you to follow the road in editor. I recommend turning off gizmos while you do this. Simply hit play and then you can either zoom in or rotate your camera just like you do in the Unity editor editor and it will follow along the road giving you a nice view of what the road looks like. The next options are materials. If you have used default materials selected you do not need to edit any of these options. If you would like to change any of the materials on the road uh, with your own materials it is very easy to do. The manual provides full descriptions of each of these materials and what they pertain to. Towards the bottom you'll find the physic materials, one for the road and one for the shoulders. The last option is reset road trains history. Only use this option if you have changed the height map resolution or other resolutions such as the detail resolution on the train after you've already built your road. Please read the manual and this warning before you do so. Now that you know how to create a road, you'll want to add items to your road. Do this by selecting a node, then finding in the inspector window Excursion and Edge Objects. Click on Open Wizard to browse the included items in Road Architect. Note that the top drop down has many different categories. If you are using a bridge, there will be even more options, which will be detailed in later tutorial videos. In this case, we're going to select um, K Rail as a center divider. In the next videos, we will go over these extrusion and edge objects more in detail. The most important thing to know when adding items to your road via the Road Architect system is that it is all node based. If you want to add something to the road, select the node first and then use the extrusion and edge object system. The actual meshes and other items created within the node will be attached as a child to the node in the hierarchy window.